All I have are uh, the lyrics of I Will Survive uh, playing through my head after dealing with some of the internet that we have to deal with just when you think we're down, Benji, we're back up and running. Hey everyone, sorry about that. Hopefully something uh, we're not too accustomed to by now, but it is uh, somewhat of a regular occurrence. A little bit of an internet issue, and I turned tail and uh, ran all the way up here. I'm in the first bungalow here in Hybrid Haven. That is Rescue Bengal Benji, hanging out with his uh, companion, Miss Sophia. Hey, Kathy Silva, good morning to you. Hey, Stephanie Hutton, we're back. We're back, Mr. Benji. I will survive as long as I've got love to give. I know I will survive, Mr. Benji. <laughs> hey, Kelly Howes, good morning. Welcome back, everyone. Sorry I lost you all. Cheryl H. is here. You can see Benji's already thoroughly enjoying his morning. He says, I've had my delicious breakfast. I've had my litter box cleaned. I've had my water bowl filled. I've had some enrichment dropped off. And uh, now it's time to live wild at heart, of course. Benji being one of our hybrid rescues, you guys know that uh, TWS is not just home to the large wild cats, but also the small uh, wild cats. And in Benji's case, a hybrid wild cat. He's a cross between a Asian leopard cat and a domestic cat as a Bengal. And uh, the mini savannas we have being a cross between an African serval and a domestic cat. And uh, sure, by now, after following the Wildcat Sanctuary, you're aware of uh, the pitfalls of hybrid ownership and how, um, unfortunately, many of these cats not making a, an appropriate pet for the home for uh, the reasons that uh, very much what they are. They're part wild, and uh, having a part wild animal in a domestic environment, um, unfortunately, doesn't always work out. Hearing the crinkle of Kiara. <laughs> Running around, always up to no good. And you like it when she stops by the bungalow too, Mr. Benji. Welcome back, everyone. That's right, Maria. I wanted uh, to go check in with uh, uh, the Tiger Trio, Mr. Griffin and Dimitri. They were uh, way uh, up on their tallest platform, catching some, catching some rays, getting some vitamin D for the day. And I wanted to see what those two goofballs were up to but unfortunately the internet got the best of us so i wanted to turn around and hightail it out of there just so i could get a little something in miss sophia yeah I'm, she says well you're giving him all the love you're giving him all the love Ooh, you like the you like the the butt the, the butt scratch that's what my cat likes too Let's see what the comments are doing miss sophia and mr benji Any updates on Taras? Let's see, Faith. Uh, nothing as of last week, just the status quo. As I'm kind of out of the loop um, for me being gone Thursday and Friday. So uh, I'll say that it's status quo uh, since last week. <laughs> Kathy Barton, you didn't lose us. We're always here, just unseen for a short time. Uh, Zoe uh, asking if we're going to fix the internet coverage. You bet, uh, Zoe. We uh, have been uh, really, really wanting to get to the bottom of our internet issues. And we are so close. We can see the light at the end of the proverbial tunnel. Um, but uh, kind of as life has been for the last uh, two years in the wake of the uh, coronavirus pandemic is that supply chains are still a little gummed up. And uh, right now, uh, these pieces that we need for new antenna to distribute Wi-Fi across the sanctuary are tied up in uh, what we're being told are supply chain issues. Kind of the last thing you want to hear and, um, and uh, something we're waiting and uh, are looking forward to intervening on our internet the moment we can. So I appreciate you asking that. Hey, pretty dude. 
Uh, Eileen is asking, why do Bengals not make good pets? And so first of all, oh, I'm gonna, you got me hooked up, Mr. Benj. Um, first of all, I should also preface that you can see me kind of petting Benji, petting Miss Sophia, is that, um, you know, here at the Wildcat Sanctuary, we are always, always, always going to tailor our uh, love to our hybrid cats accordingly. Um, Benji and Sophia are two probably of our most extroverted hybrid cats here. Um, they're what you would call a domestic Bengal, so they're going to be much more farther down in that felil generation, which is going to be an F5 or greater. Um, but to that point uh, is, you know, you might be looking at a cat like Benji and saying, well, why doesn't he make a good pet? I see you petting him and so on and so forth. And uh, a cat like Benji and many of the hybrids here, they may have uh, some of those domestic traits, but at the end of the day, they're, they're going to be pulled in um, to that wild world, that wild part of their nature more than their domestic side. And uh, I have, uh, we have a great article here on our website, on the TWS website, actually firsthand stories from um, former hybrid cat owners. And you can go down the list and look and see about how these cats are uh, unfortunately uh, not prone to using the litter box, very much into territory urination. Um, oftentimes uh, that territory urination and uh, this being territorial leads in destruction of property as well. Hybrids being uh, very uh, unfortunately destructive in their habits and tendencies. Be nice to your, to your gal pal here, Miss Benji, Mr. Benji that is. Uh, and then unfortunately too with the hybridization of uh, of these animals is that uh, there's associated, uh, a large uh, amount of health issues associated with that hybridization. And I can think of IBD, there used to be a little nickname for hybrid haven here with how stinky these litter boxes can get with some of the hybrid cats. And uh, all in all, they're, they're beautiful animals and, and um, just a cat that uh, is a completely misunderstood and something that we've been trying to talk more about hybrids as we've uh, really been kind of rolling out the small cat crisis here at the Wildcat Sanctuary and um, always kind of push people to our website, which is just going to be an absolute uh, well of information when it comes to what I was talking about earlier. If you want to read some former uh, hybrid cat owner stories, some testimonials they gave us. If you just want to go through and start reading some of the stories of hybrid cats, you're going to be able to start uh, kind of understanding or seeing a through line between many of these stories and what leads these hybrid cats to sanctuary. And then the best part, Miss Sophia, is that they can lead, they can read and learn about our hybrid rescues and and uh, maybe they could get involved in, in uh, some of our hybrids' lives. Maybe the gift of sponsorship, or maybe they want to um, give a gift towards a, a, cat, a cat's care here. It's uh, just awesome when you get on our website and you get rolling and start learning more for yourself and learning more about how you can get involved, learning more about how you can help the cats for free, be it sharing our content, be it promoting the the good word of saying no to hybrid cats and understanding that, man, we understand the allure and can see that Benji is objectively a beautiful animal, but um, it's uh, the importance is understanding the truth behind that beauty, Mr. Benji. You know, there's lots of domestic cats in need of adoption, and the last thing we need to do is create a demand for a hybrid cat, a hybrid wild cat, that is. What's your boy toy doing over here, Miss Sophia, hmm? Yeah. <laughs> oh, you, she, she says, yes, I give them, she says, I give them the beans when I need to. We know who wears the pants in this bungalow. We know, and speaking of uh, hybrid uh, cats of ruin, I'm not gonna give up to information. <whistles> Miss Kiara, pretty lady. <laughs> She says, yeah, fat chance. I'm doing other things right now. Um, but I'd like for everyone to stay close to our social media pages this week. Uh, we might have um, something new kind of percolating in uh, that department. Um, but nonetheless, I have a, another exciting thing happening this week that I'm not going to tease too much, Mr. Benji. 
Um, but typically, July, this time of year, someone special at the Wildcat Sanctuary has a birthday. So I'd like for everyone to kind of uh, think about that and, and uh, wonder uh, who at the Wildcat Sanctuary, and this is a two-legged, this is a human at the Wildcat Sanctuary, a very, very special uh, individual. They usually have a birthday this time of year in July, Mr. Benji, so that's another something this week that we're going to get excited for and celebrate. Just going to poke my head into their bungalow. Yeah, oh, you're, you're just going potty. Benji and Sophia are okayed for Lennons, which is why you're going to see blankets and, uh, you know, kind of other towels, things like that, that they like curling up with. Many of the hybrid cats not being okayed for linens, which means we still want to give them comfy places to hang out. They still get the cat beds, um, but we'll still uh, we'll use things like bedding, um, sometimes even straw in the winter that the hybrids really do love. Um, but you guys got the you guys got the blankets in there. <laughs> All right, crazy goofball. I've really been missing out on some comments here. Look at that. Look how shrewd everybody is, Benji. They know they know what's happening later this week. <laughs> and we'll have to make sure that we make it an extra special one for her as well. But stand by. Stand by later this week uh, uh, for more details, everyone. But I'm glad to see so many educated guesses here in the comments. Just going through a few comments. Hey, Faith, thanks for sharing that uh, article on our website I was talking about, uh, the testimonies from former former hybrid cat owners. And um, I just think that's kind of one of the biggest things I'd like to impress upon individuals is is how these how these people they are they're not the bad they're not the bad guys who purchase these cats. Um, it's the fact that they're being misinformed by these breeders, misinformed that a hybrid cat is going to make uh, a successful uh, partner to have in a domestic environment. And uh, that is just not the case. And it's something to where they uh, come to terms and understand that they've made a mistake and that they love these animals and they wish that they could be there for its lifetime commitment. Um, but for extenuating reasons, they're not able to. And I think that's one thing that is kind of my biggest takeaway when I read some of those articles and just, uh, you know, just having worked at TWS over the last four years is uh, how we really need to nip the misinformation in the bud. I think that's going to be the biggest way towards uh, righting the wrongs on um, this hybrid cat ownership and trying to get people more informed um, before they get into a situation where they're being misinformed by an exploiter, by a breeder. It's no good, Mr. Benj. Because they are going to do anything to get the almighty dollar. And that's uh, just a shame. But Mr. Benji, we're glad that uh, you're kind of here as an ambassador on, on uh, some of those hybrid cats still in need so we can reach out and try to make a difference for them, big fella. Yeah. We are going to make a change for it. I know it. All right, everyone. I want to thank you all for tuning in on this Monday. A little bit of a, of a two-part live post here. Got to see Rainier and Daisy be rather interested in each other, which was uh, very entertaining to see. Uh, and then shot up here to Hybrid Haven once the Internet got the best of us. And talked a little hybrid cats and talked a little bit about uh, some exciting things coming down the pipe. Uh, the TWS pipe this week. So uh, thank you again, everyone, for tuning in today. Stay close this week. As I mentioned, we have a lot of news coming your way. And uh, thank you again for making it another wonderful day of living wild at heart for so many. See you soon, everyone.